For today's devotion, I'm pleased to introduce to you our new youth director at English Lutheran, Kristen Ahrens. We're happy to have her. She brings a lot of gifts to our youth, fresh perspective, and spoiler alert, yes, she is related to our bishop. Yes, Bishop Jim Ahrens is my father-in-law. I married his son, Adam, a little over 14 years ago. Kristen, could you introduce yourself a little bit? Say a little bit about your background? Sure. Adam and I met when we were living in Washington, D.C. We were both part of a program called the Lutheran Volunteer Corps. I've had a little over 12 years of youth ministry experience, both full-time and part-time. I've also worked with at-risk youth in a financial services office, and most recently as a paraprofessional in an elementary school. But youth ministry is my passion and my calling. Even though I tried very hard to say no to my first youth ministry job, God has a way of working things out and getting us where we need to be. And God keeps bringing me back to youth ministry, and I couldn't be happier about it. I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. My family and I lived there for 14 years before moving to Wisconsin about a year and a half ago. We live in Ettrick, where Adam is pastor at North Beaver Creek Lutheran Church. It's very rural, which is a whole new experience for me, but it's been fun, and we're, we've really started embracing country life over spring and summer while we've been home together. My daughter Anna is 11 and loves our new chickens, and my son Wes is 8, and he has helped me a lot in the garden. I love to spend time outside. We hike and go on lots of bike rides. I also enjoy reading, crafting, and the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills, that's a pretty safe team around here. Pastor Becky and I are Vikings fans, and it feels to me like sometimes it's the two of us against the world around here. <laughs> yes. Kristen, how is working with youth and faith building different than working with adults? How is it the same? Well, in youth ministry, we usually play a lot more games and are more active during our faith building conversations. I'd say there are more side conversations with younger students, but I suppose that depends on the adults that you're working with. I also find that our young people are less afraid to doubt, less afraid to ask big questions and be vulnerable with each other. And they're always willing to go all in and try the new things or crazy ideas that I throw out there. It allows for an immersive experience and for deep conversations and connections to develop. It's the same in that relationship and trust within the faith community is vitally important and that our God is the same no matter how old the person is that's saying the prayers. What is your favorite Bible story and what do you like about it? I had to really think about this one because different Bible stories have stood out to me at different points in my life. But right now, I've been leaning on the Last Supper. I was able to help Adam create a reflection for Monday Thursday this past April, so I read through the story a few times in preparation, and what stood out to me then and has continued to sustain me now is the way Jesus chose to spend his time before his arrest and subsequent death on the cross. He gathered his imperfect, sinful group of friends together. He ate, he prayed, he asked for help, he fed the people he cared about, both physically with the bread and wine and other food at the table, and spiritually with his words that we now use as part of our communion meal. So when I'm feeling lost in all the uncertainty of our lives during a pandemic, I find myself leaning on what Jesus focused on in the hours before he would, knew on, he would die on the cross. It helps me to bring into focus the things that are the most important, and I feel settled and less worried. What is your favorite Bible verse? My favorite Bible verse is Matthew 5.16 because it was gifted to me by my childhood pastor as part of my confirmation. We hear it at baptisms now. It says, Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It reminds me that God has created each of us for a purpose, that we all have gifts to use for the good of the world and the good of the church. It helps to remind me that I have gifts even when I don't feel ready or knowledgeable or qualified. How can our members at English Lutheran help in the youth ministry? Pray, especially during these challenging times. Keep the youth in your prayers that they may see and feel God's love when they are at home more often than they want to be. Keep youth ministry staff and leaders in your prayers that we might be inspired to creatively find ways to minister to the young people at English Lutheran. And when we are back together again, welcome the mess. Youth ministry is not always pretty or perfect, 
Things get rearranged, loud, sometimes broken, but we're in a long game of learning about radical welcome and God's grace and love. What have you learned about your own faith when working with youth? And how might we learn about our own faith when we work with youth? I think I've learned that it's okay to ask the big, tough questions. And I've also found that youth are not, not always, but often, more comfortable with the gray areas of our faith and living into the mysteries. I also think that us adults can remember that faith is fun, that being together in a community of faith is not just study and quiet prayer, but is active and energetic and full of life and the unexpected. Thank you, Kristen. I'm sure you'll be a wonderful addition to our staff. You are already. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, help us to see the world with younger, less experienced eyes. Show us how all ages of folks may learn from each other and draw closer to each other and draw closer to you. Amen. Kristen, may God bless your, English, your ministry at English Lutheran, and may we all be inspired to help you in whatever way we can. Amen.